This is Paul Sanum with Business Success Tips, where you learn to make more money in less time and have more fun. I'm the founder of Contractor Staffing Source, where we help contractors build great teams. Now I have as my guest today, Carl Utter, and he is, uh, it's called Contractor Growth Strategies, this is his company. Um, and I think he has a lot of good advice because I'm my guess is a lot of you people are not the best salesmen on the planet out there. So you probably could use a little help. So Carl, tell about yourself, a little backstory and why people should listen to you in the first place. Sure, Paul. And uh, thanks for having me. It's uh, quite an honor to be on your show. Um, I love contractors um, and I never set out to work with contractors. Contractors ha have kind of found me and pulled me into their world. And uh, so what we do at uh, Contractor Growth Strategy is we help we help mostly in the home remodel world, but we do some commercial stuff too, is help people double their sales, especially when they're priced as much as twice as their competition. Okay. So, so here, I've heard this, I've been coaching for God knows four years and it comes all the time. Well, you're going out to meet somebody, right? And let's, this is the, this is the hard scenario. It came from Angie's list or house or something, right? So they're calling, they're calling three painters or three contractors and they're getting quote bids for their job, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you show up and you're the first, I'm going to do the, you can be the first, second or third guy, right? You never know. So let's say, you're the, let's, we're just gonna, you're the third guy, right? And they've gotten a couple other bids for their, they still want to paint their house and they've got a bid at, you know, 20, 25,000, other guys at, you know, 28,000. And I know to do it right, it's going to cost, 35,000. Exactly. How do I deal with that objection? Like you're a really nice guy, but you're not that nice a guy. <laughs> so, well, so the best way to deal with that objection is to inoculate against it. So you never get it in the first place. Right. You know, exactly. uh, of course, uh, in, in this day and age where, uh, you know, vaccines have become so politicalized. I, I probably shouldn't use this analogy anymore. Yeah, really. you know, God, I there's probably someone on here ready to take a gun to me, but that's not what I mean. It's just a metaphor. Okay. <laughs> so it, it happens all the time. And and the, the, the problem, Paul, is that human nature, you know, people go into sales probably because they're good at contracting in some way, shape, or form. They're good at cabinets. They're good at decks. They're good at painting. You know, they're good at uh, right. HVAC. And then they go into sales and they're not trained sales professionals. They're, right. they're painters. They're remodelers. That's what they know. So what they talk about on a sales call is they talk about what they know. Um, I just had uh, uh, a client call me on Saturday. I never take Saturday phone calls, but this guy's kind of new and he was in pretty tough shape when, when we met and he just, he sent me a thing where he just closed. He was at, he was at 17,000 and uh, his two competitors were at 12,000. And he said, the amazing thing was I never talked about paint. <laughs> wow. I never talked about paint. And I said, well, what did you talk about? He goes, I just asked a lot of questions. You know, I just went in and asked about their needs and what they wanted, what they felt was important, showed them how we were going to get them that was important. And, you know, uh, you know, I didn't even bother explaining why we were more, you know. So it's it's all about value, right? Is 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 in this day and age, if two contractors um go out and and especially in the painter's world where people see painting as a commodity right and i mean you know paint is paint right right and, and you know you can say I, I i just talked to a guy that actually was playing golf with the guy who's a retired painter he said it's all about prep right and I go, <laughs> a lot of people don't even know well just what's what, what what is even prep i don't care just you know paint the damn thing right he's he's right and and he's absolutely right and people don't understand what the hell he's talking about, right? They go prep. Oh right. yeah, well you know, that's putting things down, and doing a little sanding, and maybe some spot caulking, you know. Um, but they don't understand. So you know, again, you know, the customers 
you know, and here's the other thing too, Paul, is that I don't know about you, but I know I can't wire my home. Uh, I probably don't have the stamina to build a deck anymore. Uh, Not that I ever could, Uh, you know, and uh, I I, I can't replace my windows, but I can put paint on a wall, right? That is true. I I will tell you more than once, my wife has said when we had a room on project, oh, Paul, I can paint it. How hard is that? You know, I just get a paintbrush and, you know, it's just, we're just going to put another cone of of the bait in the bedroom. No big deal. And so you're right. People, it's sort of like recruiting. People think they can do that themselves because they don't understand what the really how yeah. complicated it is, right? Yeah, but probably in your world too. You know, hey, yeah. I can run an ad and interview some some some. How employees. hard is that, right? Yeah, how hard is that, right? Why should I pay for that? You know, uh, so so and of course, you know, you and I both know it's a lot harder than than it appears, and good employees are hard to find. Um, but so, so how do you convince somebody to give me the, the step by step if there's some way I know I'm the most expensive painter in town or remodeler in my market mm-hmm. and I know I'm worth it but how do I convince my prospect of the same thing so the answer to that is you can't convince anybody of anything okay so if you're telling you're not selling so what you have to do is in what we teach our clients to do is to build really good questions around the things that they do best so that you can lead a customer to understand through the the strategic use of questioning questions, you can begin to lead somebody to understand that what they want most is, is actually happens to be what you do best, right? Okay, and, so what kind of questions do you come up with? I'm just curious. Well, what we we start to do is we start to ask questions about what they're looking for. You know, what are you looking for in a contractor? What are you looking for in this project? Uh, you know, understanding what the project, we spend about, you know, about 10%, 10 to 15% of the time talking about the project and get into the the transformation they're looking for and tapping into that. And by asking questions about their previous contractor experience. I mean, you don't have to have been on this planet very long to have had a bad experience with a contract. That's true. You know, um, unprofessional, they don't show up. You know, they show up, they start a project, they leave, you don't know when they're coming back. Uh, things take longer, they're messy, they don't clean up after themselves, they send people to the, the project, you got people running around your home that look like they, you know, just got out of Denimora State Prison. <laughs> right. It's, it's um, you know, so it's understanding what what those drivers are, those emotional drivers and tapping into those. So it's not a, it's a, you know, what we teach is a seven step process that starts. Well, now now you know, I got to ask what the seven steps are because you said there's a seven step process, right? There's seven step process. So anything I say, you're going to question me about, right? So I hope you folks, if you're interested in sales, I hope you're paying attention to Paul because he is now demonstrating how to do it. <laughs> That's very good, Paul. <laughs> Uh, I, it's funny i had uh, i signed up i'm a i'm a you know you can read it in my book i'm a uh semi-professional musician i'm a drummer and uh i'm a drummer too i are you I, really? have, I have an album on you know i got 150 downloads on spotify yay no kidding and fifty thousand. so i have to talk about drumming sometimes so continue sir so i was signing up for, i was signing up for some lessons with uh with a drummer out of out of san francisco area or down in la area and uh he started asking me all these questions like, why should I take you in, you know, why should I take you under my wing and teach you, you know? And in the son of a gun, the whole, every question he asked me, Paul, I went, did I train you? <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's, you know, the no, what is it? No, like trust, right? Trust. You have to go through those sequences. So, so I'm back to the seven steps, dude. Seven now, steps. Give me the so, seven steps. I want to hear them. So the first, the first step is what we call the confirmation process. This is where we, we encourage you to begin to ask or begin to set the conditions for the call, right? You have to explain to the customer, I'm not coming out for a 15 minute walk through 
you know, and give you a drive by. Now, is this done on the phone? The step one? Step one. Yeah, it's generally on the phone. You know, okay. it, it's it's part of the confirmation process that there's certain things you need to ask for. You need to have enough time to do what you want to do so you don't get cut short or the customer surprise you. Two, you need to determine who do you want present at that call? You know, are you going to ask for all decision makers or are you going to just ask for whoever is there? The other thing is, and this is probably the single most important thing, is that we we ask in that confirmation process that before we look at the work you want done, could we sit and talk? I'd like to tell you a little about my company, and I got some questions I'd like to ask you. Would that be okay? So it's not telling them, but it's it's getting them to enter into a micro- So you're asking for permission, right, in that one? Yep. You're asking for permission. You're asking, and what you're trying to create is these little micro agreements, right? Right. Um, and, you know, in my experience, people go, yeah, sure. You know, hey, should I put on some coffee? Would you like some iced tea? You know, I mean, right. uh, you know, and you want to get to the kitchen table. I mean, that's as old as, you know, that's about as old school as old school can get, right? But Absolutely. you want to get to the kitchen table. I don't want to do a Zoom call. I want to get to the kitchen table. Right? Get to get, depending on the size of the project. You know, right. if, it's a, if it's a small $1,500 project, we'll give you a price over Zoom. I don't care. I'll give you, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, on, on your bigger work, your meat and potatoes type projects and bigger projects, yeah, you want to get face to face. So then step two is, is uh, that happens, we call that the on the way call, right, the confirmation call. And then step one is you want to start to build some rapport. And, and what we, what we teach, what we talk about is, at some in some way, shape or form, you have to get the conversation from business to personal, right? Um, so we, like you and I are drummers, we're going to talk about drumming, right? Just as an example. Now we're on a whole nother level, aren't we? Right. Who's, who's your favorite drummer, by the way? Uh, what's it? Oh, my God. The guy that played drums for Led Zeppelin. Like, um, oh, John Bonham. Bonham. Good choice. John Bonham, yeah. John Bonham. He's amazing. Yeah, my band, we do the Immigrant song. Yeah. And that's a... that's a Ginger Baker is pretty good, too. So those are like, you know, like... Who? Ginger Baker. Ginger Mickey Baker, Baker. yeah. Ginger Baker. Yep. Very good. Also, the guy from Rush wasn't bad either. Yeah, that's true. Anyhow, so we're talking about, so we've gone from talking about painting to talking about dress. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> right. So, 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 so we want to build rapport, you know, and, and through, you know, through, you can use some neurosciences. We teach a few neurosciences, you know, the, 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 the NLP, the, uh, you know, the, um, now for people that neuro linguistic programming, could yeah. you explain that really quick to somebody who has never heard of it before? And NLP, it, it just, you know, it's just a way of relating to people, um, you know, uh, neuro nervous system L stands for language, how people use language in order to build some of the programs they run. One of the things we know from the great, you know, uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini is that likability matters, right? So the more someone likes you, the more influence and the more bias it will create towards you and your offer. Um, so, right. so if you're going to sell at higher prices, right? And you mentioned no like, and trust, we need to create a a state of mind which says the customer is very responsive towards you. And, and that's what we use these skills for. Uh, and then the third step in our system is what we call the agenda step, where you set the agenda for the meeting. Um, and then we always want to frame these conversations in a client-centric way. Uh, you know, Paul, um, I have a plan for our time together today. So I don't miss anything that might be important to you. I'm going to ask you some questions uh, so that I have a better understanding of what you're trying to accomplish with this project. And, and I'm going to share a little information about our company, you know, um, and then we're going to walk around and we're going to do a very careful, detailed inspection where I'll be taking some pictures um, doing some very careful measurements. Then I'm going to go out to my car. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to put together a detailed plan of how we're going to help you accomplish your goals on this project. Then, Paul, if you like me, you like you like my company, and of course, you got to like the price, right? 
we can go ahead and get you on the schedule. Does that sound like a good a good use of our time today? Oh, that would be great. Great, That's great. So we, we started, what is it? Um, assumptive closes, right? That was great. Is that what that was? Yes. I have <laughs> unconscious competence. I've been doing this so I long. Know, it's I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, I always say, you know, it, it, yeah, you want to assume we're going to, you know, that's what we're here for. Right. You know? Right. I, cool. I'm not here to become a free educator. You know, I'm, I'm right. here to do business. You know, this right. is a business. So call. you're going to go to your truck and come back. Is that the plan after it? Yeah. Or you can do it in the house. However, okay, cool. however, yeah. It, it, and, and there are, there are some bigger projects where you're not going to be able to do that all in one call. Okay. But, you know, the majority of the bigger clients we work with have software now where they're able to do this right on the spot. Right on the spot. So they're right. able to, to, to give a quote, you know, okay. right, right. right on the spot. Um, so and then what we teach is before we go into what we call the credibility statement, where we teach them how to. And this is step four is how to deliver a really short but high impact credibility statement. And uh Grab the book. There's, you know, grab the book. It's called the painting. Give me an Contract. example of a short, Public high sales. impact credibility statement. Carl. What's that? Give me an example. Um, so it it might sound something like this. It's it's got some components to it. So it's got a quick introduction to the company. So, uh, you know, hey, um, you know, our company was started by um, by uh, George. Let me just back up here and. So, hey, you know, our company was started 15 years ago by our founder, George Maccabee, uh, and George started this company with the mission that he wanted to change customer experiences with contractors. Uh, we currently do about 150 homes a year. And Paul, that's over 1,500 homes in the last decade alone. And Paul, the thing we're most proud of with all those homes over all those years, you know, we've never had a single complaint with the Better Business Bureau. We have a four-star rating on Yelp and a five-star rate and a five and a 4.7 rating on Google. Paul, as for me, why I do this, I love it to see, I love to see the look on your face when you come home and you see your home completely transformed. Paul, does that sound like the kind of company you'd like to work with? Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, that's the key to getting yeses is to ask questions right. they can't do. Who's going to sit there and say, hey, no, oh, you suck, suck right? <laughs> Great. Let me get your price. We'll get you on the schedule, right? All right. Um, so, so we start stacking, you know, we start the process of stacking yeses. And then we go into step five, which is really the biggest step in the whole system. And that's what we call the, the, uh, the pain gain value proposition where we take them through a very detailed interview to understand, you know, to understand their buying motives, right? We, if you've been in sales any amount of time at all, you know, people buy emotionally, yet nobody sells emotionally. I remember, you know, I remember when I was a young buck, long time ago, and, uh, you know, my one of my managers would say, you know, you got to sell emotionally. You got to talk down their heart. You got to sell emotionally. I went, yeah, yeah. That's how do I do that? Right. Oh, you know, you just, you know, you you just get into their emotions. Okay, great. How do I do that? You know, it's like, right. you know, uh, you know, people buy from their heart, but not from their head. But how do you get to their heart, right? So yeah, I mean, and they, you know, and that's. And you you have to do it in an environment where people are traditionally very guarded. When you go into the home, if you're selling in the home, you're now a stranger in my world. You know, all kinds of walls are going up. So, so that's where that going back to that step two, that bonding and rapport is so important. And so how do I get the emotional connection? You, you, you have to, uh, you have to ask, you have to, you have to ask questions to find out what's important to people. Um, you have to leave them feeling like you understand them and their concerns. Um, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know, one of my managers used to say this all the time, and it's so true. Selling in the home is a social skill. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's a social skill. So, so it's, and, and the way you do it is to stop talking about what you sell, right? I mean, it's, it's, we want to get into why, what they want and why they want it, right? And, and understanding what's truly important. To You're them. talking about benefits and not features, right? Sales winning, right? Well, not even, not even that yet. We're not even talking about, about presenting. We're still talking about intake, gathering, you know, right? It's, it's qualifying, okay. you know, it's, it's we want to call. I want to understand what you're going to buy and how you're going to buy before I show you how I'm going to help you achieve your goals. So it comes back to framing. And we frame that conversation is, is, hey, Paul, so I don't miss anything that might be important to you, right? I'd like to ask you some questions so I don't miss anything, right? So it, it's, 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 it's all in, I always say your intention counts more than your technique, right? If your intention is to help somebody, you, that, that gets read by people, right? I mean, we know that in this day and age, 93% of communication is nonverbal, right? Yet 93% of the people I, wa I watch try and sell, try to sell verbally. Right. So it's a, it's a nonverbal, it's a nonverbal skill. It's, it's watching, it's listening, it's reading, it's reacting, and it's guiding and leading. You know, I want to, I want to lead my customer through a process that leads them to discover that really what they want most fits what I do best. And I need to understand under what conditions would they pay more to get what they want? Okay. Because if I can't answer those two questions. So let, let's, what are some some gives the other people listening to this some ideas on what kind of questions those might be specifically. So questions might be, have you ever worked with another contractor before? Tell me, what did you like about that experience? What could they have done better? Um, you know, when hiring a contractor, you know, what's most important to you about that? Um, also asking more menu based leading questions like, you know, Paul, Typically, when I'm talking to your neighbors in the area, we do a lot of work around here uh, and we're asking about, you know, what concerns they might have. You know, typically they tell me things like they're frustrated with contractors that don't show up on time. They're worried that they're going to pay a lot of money, not get what they pay for. Um, they've heard horror stories about contractors who come in, they start work, they leave, they don't communicate or clean up after themselves. You know, so basically you're eliminating objections that, I mean, in a sense, the, the concerns that people have and bringing them up. So it, I get it. Bringing them out so that you can, you can present the right features and benefits, right? Okay. Right. So, so that, that, what that does is by asking those questions, it informs how we present our offer in okay. what features we're going to, we're going to feature, right? You know, right. if, if, if you, you're not worried about the reputation of a contractor, I'm not going to go in and, and pitch you on our reputation. Right. But, you know, you may tell me, well, you know, I, I want somebody who's going to show up and stay on the job, you know, and not leave and go work on somebody else's project, you know? So, so that's what I mean when I say that our job in the interview is to help them discover that what they want most fits what we do best. So what you're trying is discover their emotional needs, like fear of being abandoned or fear of being taken advantage of, or you know, fear of somebody stepping on their flowers or hurting their dog or being inappropriate with their whatever, right? We all have those fears. Yep. It, and you know, I'll never forget the first contractor I ever worked with when I was in Philadelphia. We had somebody come to class and say, you know, for the first time in two years, I actually lost a job when I was cheaper than a competitor. And we go, well, how did you do that? He goes, I don't know. I go, well, when you asked the customer why they went with a more expensive option, what did she tell you? I didn't ask her that. I go, well, what would happen if you went and asked her? Yeah, I, I, gotta, <clears throat> I, I was doing a <clears throat> dealing with a coach and for the recruiting business. And he said, 
what's the last question? I, I said, I always ask people why they left and they go, oh, because you did an awesome job and you found all my people and good. He goes, you're asking the wrong question. You should ask, what would it take them to stay? Duh, right? <laughs> like, questions are really important. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and 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 asking them in a way that that, you know, what people don't realize, you know, is is that a lot of times what happens when you ask question that creates an internal representation in your customer's mind, right? Right. And I, I love the uh, the exercise. You know, if Paul, if I were to say to you, "Don't think of a blue tree," right? Blue it, trees, right? We got. Right? What do you have to do in order to understand that? Right? You have to think of what it is you're not going to think of, right? right? You know. And Paul, I would never suggest that you hire me today. <laughs> that's right there was this there was this you know, guy last said, thing i want to do is, is be pushy because you know i want you to hire me because you're comfortable and you feel i'm going to do the best job you know so i don't want you to hire me until you're absolutely comfortable that i'm the person to do your project now i don't know if you can see me working with you or not <laughs> right perfect that's that's bang you know that's just giving them the image, right? Because that's where they have to be. They have to get right. to that point in order to hire you. And there's a short, there's a really, there's a shortcut. There's a very shortcut way to do that. And that's to tell them not to think of a blue tree. Right. Right. Don't think of having a blue background. So now we have the emotional, you know, report. What that we're in step five. We got six and seven to go, right? So six is what we call the walk around to take off. <laughs> And uh, what we teach is we develop the pro proprietary um, during the walk around and takeoff. And, and, and this is where the tech talk takes place. So I have very little to teach people about how to do that. That's what they've been doing their whole life anyway. So we don't really mess with that step. What we do is get them to, to shut up, you know, stop talking about themselves, stop selling and ask questions leading up to the takeoff. And then when they do the takeoff, it's a good time to point out problems. It's a good time to talk about maybe, you know, some things you're going to address for them in, in, your, in your presentation. The other thing we teach there is our proprietary price, con price condition is, is the last question in step five is we open up a conversation around price conditioning where we start to price condition them. And what we want to do is we want to get them thinking that the cost of this is going to be about 25 to 35% higher than our, our proposal is going to come in. So what we want to do is get them really uncomfortable at this point, really uncomfortable. Like, oh, like, like one of my clients said, yeah, I think I did too good of a job. I had a woman in tears. <laughs> Like, no, it's not the point of price conditioning. Because, yeah, I was telling her it's going to be $25,000 and it was only like eight. I was like, yeah, that, that might have done it. That's right. Um, so, so during step six, we, we, we start to really deepen what we call the price conditioning conversation, where we really start to get them to really start to understand that to get a really good professional job it's probably gone up a lot more than you thought it has uh, right. but then again what has it since COVID? <clears throat> right okay um, and then finally what we call we call the last step is and this is where i find most contractors don't do this and whether you're presenting your price on the spot or not is what we teach is how to present the irresistible offer uh, you know i borrowed this technique from the marketing world um, but sit down and say, okay, here's the feature. Here's why this feature is important. Uh, here's the benefit. Here's the, and, and here's the, and the other thing we teach is we teach them how to talk about an experiential benefit, which is right. radical. There's hardly anyone that does this in, in the trades, but we go out and we say, you know, you know, imagine, you know, 10, 15 years from now, Paul, you come home from work, you get out of your car after a hard day. You look at your house and you realize, my God, it's been 12 years and it still looks amazing. So you right. give them an experience of what it's going to be like to interact with the benefits you're offering. Right. And then we tie that into the emotional benefits. So we teach that there's three levels of a benefit, a, a, a surface level, you know, surface level, you know, base, the basic benefit, 
the experiential benefit and the emotional benefit. So we use the features to design those benefits and we pick the feature that addresses the problems they brought up in step five. Okay. And then I have one close and one close only. And that is Paul. So this is our offer. Have I answered all your questions? Yep. Great. Would you like to get on our schedule? <laughs> Your that's place it. or mine, right? So, that's place. it. <laughs> Same thing. <clears throat> Just a alternative choice clause, like you want to get on the schedule. So <clears throat> there's a, there's a lot there to unpack. You know, uh, I strongly recommend those of you that are <clears throat> listening that I'm not suggesting that you go back and listen to this over and over and over again. I would never tell. Well, I think you meant be be much better off time. giving you a call, actually. So I would girl. never suggest that you give me a call and see. Yeah, this right. For you. Yeah, you think about anything, but don't think about talking to Carl on the phone. All right. Yeah. I just clear your mind from everything, but talking about Carl on the phone. Yeah. Anything but that, right? And so, anything girl, but that, you know. In case they can't get that out of their brain and they decide they want to like, release this tension that they really need to call you <laughs> how do they get in touch with you well they could go to contractgrowthstrategy.com or they could call me um uh, at my at my number at area code 610-715 wait for it 8000 that's an awesome number one more time 610-715-8000 Great. And see what you do is you go hire Paul and get some more employees. Now you need to bring in more revenue to pay for those employees. And then you, you call me. Or you, that or you, help or you, you build hire up you the first revenue. to get a bunch of work and they need us to find the employees, right? And, and, then, work. and, then, and then you go get Paul more work. So Paul and I are in cahoots together. Now. That's true. So, We're both trying to help make you more money, right? That's our mission. here. That's right. That's right. Uh, and I know from my end, that's, I, I think that's one of the biggest problems I see. And many times I've had conversations with, with business owner going, work. Well, it used to be this way back during COVID. And, you know, it's like, I got all the work I can handle. I can't find people to go deliver the work. Right. Um, we, we have seen that, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of calls in the last two, three months of people saying, we just got a call recently. We had a guy, you know, he's 28 employees and uh, telling me that, Business is down about 900,000 from the previous mm -hmm. year. Um, we, we're seeing that a lot. Close rates are down. Uh, people aren't closing leads the way they used to. Well, they need both things. They need good people and a great team, and they need enough clients to do it. So it should always be marketing, always be recruiting. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So again, th thank you, Carl, for being here. I think if you don't call Carl, Carl you're not you're making a mistake because I've been selling for God knows 50 years, and I just learned a couple of things. I think what I learned, Carl, from you is that Reminded me, oh yeah, I have to listen more. I have to connect, you know, connect emotionally. You know, st stop telling and start selling. The more you listen, the smarter you. The more you listen, the smarter you get. Right. Oh, I like that so, one. <laughs> so thanks, Carl. I appreciate being here. I suggest you all give Carl a call if you would like to learn how to sell a lot better. Great job, Carl. Thank you for being well, here. Well, thanks so much for having us on, Paul. I really appreciate it. And. Uh, we have a new mastermind group starting and I, I plan on getting you in front of our mastermind people too. So hey, that sounds great. Okay. Thanks a lot. Please give Carl a call. It'd be a good call to make, but don't think about giving Carl a call. Just kidding. <laughs>